Welcome, welcome everyone. We're live. We are going to start by asking a question we need you to comment on. Um, we really want to know what kind of pets you have. We are looking for a number like I have way too many to cancel. An example <laughs> would be five pets, three cats, two dogs, that type of a thing. Um, I can't do that. I have nine goats, eight fish, one dog. I have no idea how many cats. So it's like we're starting to get some viewers now. And um, what we'd like is for you to comment how many animals you have. Tell us how many and then what kinds. Like, say if you have five pets, then like three cats and two dogs, uh, fish, horses. Let, let's know what kind of animals we're going to be discussing today. That would be really awesome. So, yeah, comments, please. If you are unable to comment, please join this group. Um, they are There is someone that's sitting down there approving requests as quick as we can, and they will... Um, that will enable you to be able to comment on it. So, uh, CB Giles has one toy poodle. Cute. My daughter wants a toy puppy so bad, but she wants, so I can remember what it's called. It's a Cavalier King Spaniel. Oh, they're darn cute. Okay. Jenny's got one dog. Amy has three cats. I already said this once, but I have got lots of animals. I have nine. I have nine does and two bucks in goats. Um, one dog. Eight fish, and I have too many cats to count. <laughs> they're most they're all outside except for the one that we're bottle feeding at the moment. So great fun. Yeah, comment and tell us how many pets you've got and what kinds. It would be great to know. Anybody who doesn't know, this is Sarah. Um, Sarah Hi. Hobbs joining us today. She's our resident expert as far as pets and oils go. Uh, it's pretty broad. At market out there and there's not a lot of information and so what we'd really like to do is get people to that have been using oils and have pets to help other people that have pets and so kind of if we don't know the answer we're just gonna admit it we're not we're not stuck up or anything we don't have to know everything and maybe somebody else in the group will be able to answer the question we're good with that that's that's all right Annika has three horses and two dogs all right well um, Sarah actually has <laughs> a lot, <laughs> lots of animals too. She has four horses. She has eight dogs. Five of them are hunting dogs. Um, and then she's got three other dogs. You have to help me. So I have two Boston Terriers. Um, one of them has been deaf since birth, and then she just actually recently lost her eye. And then I have a Jack Russell Terrier named Lilo. So that's my three little dogs. Yes. Three little dogs, and then your five hounds, right? Yeah, and then I have five <laughs> hounds, and then cats and ducks and chickens, and yeah, Sarah's Sarah's very much a country girl and an animal person. So comment, tell us what kind of animals you have. Um, Angela says she's got a horse, a dog, two cats, and chickens. So she's got her hands full too. Good, good, good. And Melinda has two Boston babies. It's like Boston terriers, like Sarah. Well, that's it. We, we'd love to know, Melinda. Are they Boston terriers or? What, what do you mean by Boston babies? Boston and then, babies are the best. Yeah. Okay, one other thing, before we get started really quick, we need to do a drawing from last week because I, I went on a trip and I was gone for several days and I haven't got it done yet, so I thought we'd do it on air. I've got everybody's names that commented last week or shared in here, and the first one we're going to draw for is the reset kit that we discussed last week. And it's going to go to Boston Terrier, she says. It's going to go to Melinda Shoden. So if you would PM me where you would like that shipped, I will get that shipped out to you tomorrow. All right, Sarah, you want to draw for the other one? Sure. Which is the spring reset kit. All right, let's pick this one. So it is Vicki Westover Me. All right, yes, PM us your address so we can ship that off to you. I just want to put the name on top of it. I'll forget. Okay. Then I'll end up watching myself on video, which I hate to do. Okay, that wasn't too hard. All right, so we're not actually going to do a drawing this week. We're going to we're going to do something a little bit better. We're going to give you a coupon code for a free bottle of Tranquility and it's going to be um the first 50 people that place an order for a uh, free bottle of Tranquility and it's not a normal bottle of Tranquility. Um it's one that they did that was a limited edition so it's got fireworks on the side and and it's a Pretty cool. It's for July. Um, and the reason that we did 
this limited edition tranquility was because of the fireworks. Fireworks tend to spook animals really bad. The and, thunderstorms. And kids. I kept one in my purse every time we went to the fireworks. I still had it in my purse when we did the carnival and it ended up being a very wonderful thing. I think I'll just leave it in my purse. It's a, it's a great thing. So we'll give one of those mm -hmm. away to anybody who puts that code in. And the code is oil pets. No space. O-I-L-P-E-T-S. All right, comment and tell us about your animals, how many you have and what kinds. And if you have any questions, um, like what an animal with a specific issue, we'll like to get started on our discussion. The one that we're going to start with is, I can better remember her name. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it was Elaine. Elaine texted me some pictures of her dog, um, and she's been trying a couple of different things with it, and she wasn't really sure what was going on, but it wasn't getting better. So from the pictures, I believe it looked like a fungus. And so what I recommended that she do for a fungus, it was in the fur, it was a black dog, was actually water with no more, and no more is a fungus oil. And a spray bottle like this really works great because it's glass. You can just fill it with water, add a couple drops of no more, and then you can just spray it. You can't do it too often, several times a day. Um, you could use a plastic spray bottle. I like, I really like the glass ones. And every couple of days you need to refresh, add a couple new drops of no more. So, see, we've got some more. Lisa says she's got a cat and several chickens. Victoria says her audio went out just as you gave the code. Okay, the code is oil pets, all one word, O-I-L-P-E-T-S. And this will be recorded so you can watch it again too. All right, and then Melinda's got a Boston Terrier rash after running in the grass on its belly. So I would start off with Miracle Sav on that because it's generally, uh, they've done so much running through the grass that they've wore off their skin. So I would start with something like Miracle Sav, and you could add just a little bit of lavender, maybe a little bit of helichrysum in. I would be help. wondering too if maybe the grass wasn't treated with like a bug spray or a root spray. It that could, could be, be yeah. something like that. In which case, washing the fur to get it off so that it's no longer right. there is an irritant. I know animals just love baths. It's their <laughs> favorite um, neutralizer. The That's it's a, a Miracle idea. Two product, and I actually brought it up, but I brought it up for something different. So we'll talk about that too. But Miracle Two is a it's an interesting little product. But I use it on sunburns and different things, but it's great for neutralizing things like that. And again, I would just put it in maybe the industrial spray bottle or a regular spray bottle, spray it on them after you've washed them, make sure you get it off. Ina Kurt says, hi guys. Kim Wilson says she's got five horses and two dogs. So the reason I actually brought this up to show it to you was because with goats, one of the things that I run into a lot is worms. And I don't know if it's just the area that I live in, but if I get, if my goats get, overrun too badly with worms then they're unbreedable they get really skinny their fur gets really really bristly and they'll actually break off and get really short in places and I've bought several they, yeah, itchy. they hate it I've, I've bought several goats that were on the verge of starving to death because the worms were so bad and I just use about an ounce of the neutralizer a couple of drops of soap I mix it into their grain mostly they don't like it they don't like that soap taste and they'll eat around it but if I only give them the amount of grain that's their daily allotment, eventually they'll get like, oh, I'll just eat it. Um, I do that for three or four days, and I take a break for three or four days, and I'll do it again. And I will add coconut to their grain for the days when I'm not doing it. And it gives them extra fats, and it really helps their coat to get shiny. So the soap and the neutralizer are both sold like this. But when you're doing it, you're using... I'm going to turn them both backwards. You're using an ounce of neutralizer, but you're only using a little bit of soap. And so um, I finally convinced the company that so many people really didn't want a bunch of soap. So they put together this that just has a little tiny bit of soap, which is all you need if you're warming animals. And that's, that's a great way to do it. I do my goats probably twice a year, except for the ones that I bought that are really bad. And I will, I just do it. I just watch the fur and kind of get an idea for how often to warm them. I haven't done the warming thing on other animals very much. Um, I added a tiny bit to cats once that I felt like we're really doing bad pirate pinworm parasites. And um, if you overdo the soap, you will give your animals diarrhea. So probiotics, I really like the probiotics. I'm not really sure what the brand is, but I buy it all the time at the vet store or the grain growers, whatever your local feed store will have it. And if I give them diarrhea, I 
just give them some of that and it cleans right up. Okay, we got a question. Any oil to help with deworming? Yeah, we just covered that. Woohoo! <laughs> Too bad I can't read the comments and talk at the same time. <laughs> uh, anybody who wants to ask us any questions, specific things about your pets, and also we'd like to know what kind of pets you have and how many. What's the soap called? The soap is called Miracle 2. Um, it's Great just, product. Miracle 2 is it's not a Butterfly Express product. They do carry it because I use so much of it and I talk about it. So, um, But you can get it from Miracle 2. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from Butterfly Express. So. Oh, we have a question from the order desk. Um, yeah, so if in case you just joined, what we're doing is is if um, if you place an order after you've watched this live and you order anything, it doesn't matter if it's a dollar, doesn't matter if it's a thousand dollars, we don't care. If you order anything, you put in the code Oil Pets, and it's going to give you a free bottle of Tranquility with the limited edition fireworks label. And the first fifty people to do that get one. What so. they call? If they call in, I think I can get Butterfly Express to okay that. They'll forgive me later. Just say yep. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, I haven't just spent my whole paycheck. Woohoo! Oh, <laughs> no, they'll be good to me. They they like me. I'm a, I'm a good. What do you call that? I don't know. They like me. Okay, oil safe to diffuse in my bedroom where my Yorkies sleep. Yorkies are cute. So there's a lot of good oils you can diffuse um, around your Yorkie. Um, if you're wanting to help them be more tranquil, tranquility would be a great one. Good night would work for them. Um, dreams should be okay. Lavender, those kinds of things, those would be good to diffuse around them. So, can you think of anything else? Yeah, the code for the free tranquility is oil, pets, no space. And uh, it says out of tranquility for coupon. If that, if it's telling you that in the in the cart, um, I will get it fixed as soon as I'm not sitting here in front of this live, and we'll just honor it for 24 hours. I I was working on it and I thought I had it, and three o'clock snuck up on me today. So if it doesn't work, I'll fix it as soon as this live's over, and I'll just turn it on for 24 hours, and we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Really great. Okay. Um, as far as the oils to diffuse, there are some oils that pets don't like, um, and Sarah's got that. She's done quite a bit of research on that. But dogs are a lot like people. I mean, there's some oils I don't like diffused, and every dog's going to be a little bit different. So if you just start out really small, just try a little bit. You know, let them smell the bottle without getting it on their nose. And if they don't like it, put it away, put the lid back on, and try a different one. Um, we've been using Tranquility quite a bit the last two months with pets, and we haven't had anybody say, hey, my dog hates that, or my cat won't, doesn't tolerate that one at all. So Tranquility seems to be a pretty safe bet. There's another one that Sarah was telling me about this morning called Be Gone, and it's actually a bug spray. So, right, for fleas and ticks. But three of the oils in it are very, very calming, and so it's a great one for animals. Be Gone is great because of the three calming oils, but you may also keep you know, some of the bugs and animals out of their fur. Okay, please talk about fleas, ticks, and hot spots. I don't know what a hot spot is. Um, the hot spots are kind of hard. Because there's so many things that can, like, the skin is is really hard to deal with. Because there's so many things that can come into play with it. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of oils that I know are good for skin. Um, so carrot seed is a really good one for the skin. Helichrysum is a good one for the skin. Um, lavender. Miracle salve would be maybe beneficial, but it depends on what's causing the hot spots. If they have an allergy or if they're getting into some kind of chemical or something like that. Educate me here. What is a hot spot? <laughs> I think a hot spot is basically like where they have a spot of rash on their skin. And you guys can tell me if I'm wrong on this because maybe I am. But I think it's basically a place where they have a kind of almost a, an allergic reaction and they lose their, their, they have a red hot irritated spot on their skin. So tell me if I'm wrong on that one. I, with fleas and ticks and, and probably hot spots too, I'd be tempted to try the neutralizer or water if you don't have neutralizer with deliverance because deliverance kills all nasties and it will kill whatever might be in the fur that's irritating it and I'd try it a couple of times and then maybe switch to something soothing like lavender um or chamomile though they're both very very similar or very soothing okay um megan pal's got 
tell me what this word is right here, Sarah. Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Thank you. I had it a minute ago. Two chihuahuas and a cat. And Amy, um, she, I think it was Amy a minute ago. The comments are going past too fast, but she said the millennia worked really good and the tranquility for her animals that haven't had a problem with those. Um, cat. And yeah, it was cats that she said did okay with millennia and tranquility. So yeah, this is good. We can share information and, and everybody will get more experience without having to experience quite so much. Okay. And Megan says that she has a chihuahua that is allergic to fleas and losing hairs because yeah, I would try the deliverance with neutralizer. I'm actually going to grab that. That's three times they've called. I'll bet it's the order desk and they're getting phone calls because I promised everybody tranquility <laughs> and they, I didn't tell them. So I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> Well, uh, Sarah, you want to tell them about, um, oh, what was it? I had several things I wanted to make sure we covered. Worming, which we kind of covered. Um, funguses, which we covered a little bit. How about I tell them about a first aid kit that I think would be really good for their pets? Um, the mini starter kit. The mini starter kit has a lot of great oils in it that are generally safe for pets not all the time with cats but most of the time with everything else okay we had a lot of people that said they had horses and with larger animals larger farm animals um, particularly with my goats I have run into several instances where I have needed large quantities of miracle salve I had a goat and I have absolutely no idea what happened but I went out to the pasture one day and her whole like her leg was split almost from the hip and it kind of it almost looked like it had to have been barbed wire because it wrapped around it and it was, I mean, tendons were torn. It was the biggest mess I had ever seen. And I never did f figure out what it happened on. Um, we wrapped that thing up with Miracle Salve. We sprayed it out with Yarrow really good to disinfect it. And I, I think it had been several hours since she'd done it. I didn't notice as fast as I should have. And it healed up over the course of a couple of months. She had a scar for about a year. And when I sold her, you couldn't even tell that it had ever been there. So miracle salve with horses. I I know several people who've used it on pigs for fair and larger animals like that. I mean, it's kind of a mess in the fur, but it is so it's amazing what you can do with that stuff. Heliochrism or yarrow and mix it in right. miracle salve and slather it on. Um, miracle salve can get kind of expensive when you're using it in that larger quantity on big animals. But there's a video on our YouTube channel which is Butterfly Express Essential Oils that tells you how to make your own and you can make a big gallon of it for not that much more than you can buy it and then you have plenty to use on your animals so all right comment and tell us um what kind of animals you have how many and any things that you might want to know and if we know we'll answer you so <laughs> yeah we we definitely um need some more topics to discuss this is really fun I should tell you about my horse. Can I tell you about that story? Sure. So we had a horse that cut his flank, and it was over 200 stitches, oh. and it was right along his flank. And he could not keep the stitches in there. So it ended up being the size. You could fit like a cantaloupe in this pocket of skin that he had. We used yarrow. We used helichrysum. I used turmoil on him, and it took him about three weeks, but he healed up just fine. You, he does have a scar but not too bad. And I think we used uh, the Miracle Salve on him as well, so. Yeah, I have I had a goat last year that cut her leg, and I this goat is so frustrating. She's my oldest goat. I paid more for her than any other goat that I've ever bought, and I bought her for breeding purposes, and the first two years she didn't take, and so I was very frustrated because she's just getting older. And last year I worked really hard with her all summer trying to get her fattened up to where I felt like I could breed her, and she goes and cuts her leg. And it, I could not keep that thing closed. I, I mean, we would wrap it and she would pull it off. She was so frustrating, but I kept Yarrow and Miracle Salve on it until we got it healed up. I ended up breeding her a couple months later than I was planning on. She delivered gorgeous twins this spring. Girls, too. That was just very nice of her. <laughs> um, one of them is so dang cute, it's spotted. But that goat, it's one thing after another with her. She did pink eye. She did a huge abscess behind her ear. I thought maybe I got CL in my herd, and I had to had to send a sample off to Waddle in Washington to make sure that I didn't have that. She went into labor and stayed in labor for eight days without delivering her baby. Scared the heck out of me. Yeah, she's a pain in the butt. And I'm not breeding her this fall. I'm really excited about that. But I, she's a pain. <laughs> she's my one that will get diarrhea every time I warm her. And it doesn't matter how slow I am with it or how careful I am. She's just, oh, she's a pain. 
but she did an abscess um and I found the abscess about a week into her being in labor. It was hidden right behind her ear where I couldn't see it very good because she's a Nubian and Nubians hate their ears being touched. Um, and so she managed to hide that thing from me pretty good. It, I finally parked in the, the in the birth stall with her and I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on with you, but I'm not leaving until you have those babies. And I was just sitting out there with her. I think part of it was she just didn't want to do it by herself. So I'm sitting out there and I noticed that abscess and I call my mom. I says, Mom, what do I do? What do I put on this? And she says, Well, Yarrow would be good for it. And she says, But Yarrow might start her into labor. I says, Well, that wouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> and she, I had my kids had to be somewhere. So my mom said, I'll come get your kids and take them where they have to be. You you deal with the goat. My mom lives six miles from my house. So I walked into my house, I got the yarrow, I put it on the abscess. And a few minutes later, I hear my mom pull in the driveway. She comes out to the barn to see what she can do. And I already had one baby there, and the second one was on its way. So the arrow kicked her right into labor after eight days of messing around with that. She just had it so fast. It was wonderful. Okay, Megan, we get read hers. Let's see. Melinda says, love be gone. Yes, I do too. Chelsea says, dogs too. Anything for eating dirty diapers. I know it's gross, but Hank will not stay out of the trash. That is interesting. If you could find an oil that he doesn't like. That's what I was going to say. Maybe powder. cayenne, a little cayenne powder around uh -huh. or something. That's really, yeah, I would find an animal that he, or an oil that he doesn't like, and I would just keep a little spray bottle right by the garbage and spray it every day. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if one dogs don't like. Anybody oh, I'm know sure, one yeah. that their dog doesn't like she could try? <laughs> Jill Hart says, oh, baby goats. Yes, I love my baby goats. I love baby goat season. I go around and horn people's goats just so I can see them. And I, and I have two stud goats. So I, I'll just ask people to send me pictures when I get pictures. My, my stud's gorgeous. He's a camouflage goat. So he gets some interesting babies. He's beautiful. Jill says peppermint for dogs because it's really strong. Peppermint would be a good one to start with. I, yeah. And it is strong, but you can dilute it. Dilute it with water and yeah, see it'll stay it. out of the garbage. It wouldn't hurt. The smell of peppermint would be great on yeah, that's a good thought. Okay, is there an essential oil to help with curly, tangling hair on a dog? I'm asking for a friend that has a small dog. Do you know what kind of a dog it is? And it tangles like crazy even when they comb it daily. I would almost be tempted to try spraying it with just a little bit of coconut oil. Um, just because it makes it so much softer and maybe it wouldn't tangle quite as bad. Um That'd be interesting to know what kind of a dog it is, too. I spray my goats once in a while with it. It just makes their fur so much shinier. Yeah, you could you you could try right. argon or argan, however you argan. say that. And it's, then you could maybe try delicate, the essential oil delicate, for helping with for the hair. Yeah, with the hair. You could even mix the two. You could put a little delicate in your carrier oil and either brush it on or spray it on. Right. Yeah, the peppermint Chelsea would definitely be better the smell than the garbage, so it couldn't hurt. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what other ones dogs don't like, but there's there's got to be one. <laughs> okay, comment and tell us what kind of animals you have, what kind of issues you have, and um, what what kind of questions can we ask answer for you? We do. Sarah has spent the last little while writing a wonderful article. Um, it's called "Healing Your Pets with Essential Oils," and she has put it. She's allowed us to put it on our blog. So if any of you don't know about our blog, our blog is butterflyexpressions.net. And you can go and read that. You can print it. You can refer to it. You're welcome to comment on it. If you want to ask questions after this live is over and, and get other people's attention and, and opinions about essential oil use and your animals, there is another group that we started that is attached to the Butterfly Express Essential Oils page. And it's just essential oils and your pets. And anybody who joins that group, then you can ask other people questions. And we'll watch the group. We'll answer it if we know. Um, there's quite a few people, you know, we can, my mom and I, and we've got quite a few pet-loving friends. We, we will see if we can't come up with answers and give you ideas. I think that there's a great need for people to support other people that own pets. There's just not a lot of information out there with essential oils and pets. Okay, what can you use to keep spiders? away. I know the answer to this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's peppermint. I spray the outside of my foundation with peppermint. Do not do that if you're pregnant. That's too much peppermint for a pregnant person. <laughs> but it works really well in one of those hand pump sprayers. You just fill, I have like a three gallon one and I'll fill the three gallon thing and I'll add about 15 drops of peppermint and I'll just spray the outside of my 
foundation. And I'll spray the inside of my storage room because I have big open holes in my storage room where we were venting fans out um, for my freeze dryer, and I know that's like a spider trap. The other thing I do is right below those two holes, I keep a five-gallon bucket with about a gallon of water in it. So when they, they fall in, and I make Matthew change it about once a week, it's gross. <laughs> it's my spider trap. But peppermint will keep them away. They don't like it at all. And it, neither do mice. Double benefits right there. Okay. Will it keep away black widow spiders? Ooh, scary story. Um, I like stories, though. So middle of the night one time, I was cold. It was wintertime. And, and I got cold enough that I actually decided to go build a fire in the middle of the night. And I'm half awake building my fire and putting wood in. And I all of a sudden, I look up and realize that there's a black widow spider that dropped down right in front of my face. So, yeah, I went upstairs and woke my husband until my stand fell in the fire. But uh, we sprayed the, enti the inside of our foundation with peppermint. And I had a couple of kids sleeping down there. So I, we actually moved out, moved in with my parents for a couple of days, and we set off a bug bomb because I didn't want to take the chance where it was black widow spiders. But I have since messed with it a little bit. Um, black widow spiders at my house are common. And we have messed around with a black widow spider that we had isolated and you know kind of put peppermint around trying to get it to go a different direction and they will they'll stay away from the peppermint they don't like it but if i knew i had them i don't know especially with kids you just don't want to mess with that mm -hmm. so okay i think she is a multi poodle or something similar i'm not familiar with that breed which really isn't surprising um no. It's a Maltese and a Poodle a Maltese cross. Maltese Poodle cross. They do have curly, fairly curly hair. Yeah, I think I, I would almost consider worming her too, just because worming will cause hair to be coarse and weird. And so I would almost consider maybe that it's a worming issue, especially if she's underweight or anything like that. But the coconut oil um, would be great. So. I, I know with sure horses, um, you can tell if they're wormy by how much they rub their tails, and their tails will get all fuzzy and stuff. And that's how you can tell if you need to worm them. Hmm. No, th their coats don't get bristly? No, not really. It's more their tails than their manes. Interesting. Yeah. That's just a, a, a wives tale I've heard. So if it's, But I think it's, it seems to be accurate with our, our horses. With goats, it starts on their back legs. And their and their necks, it seems like those are the worst. Okay, an oil for deworming. There's not an oil for deworming, but we talked about Miracle 2, which is, here, I'll show it to you again. This is the neutralizer, and this is the soap. And with a full-grown goat, I use, like, an ounce of the neutralizer and maybe one to two drops of the soap. I don't use very much. So with smaller animals, obviously, it's going to be quite a bit less, and I don't, I don't have a ton of experience. I did use it on cats. Um in their milk once. It's hard to get them to drink it because it tastes like soap. It's, um, but if you can get it down them, I think it would be great. If you've got any kind of a treat to hide it in. Um, I did hide it in tuna fish once and that was a lot better than trying to get them to drink it with the milk. I was trying to worm a whole bunch of them. We had a lady that got taken into a, a, a nursing home and she had 36 cats next door. They were starving and me and one of the neighbors did everything we could but they needed worming and Oh, it, it was a mess. Anyway, we won't go there, but but we did try warming them in mass with milk, and it just didn't work. But tuna fish, I, you could hide it in tuna fish a lot better. How do you calm down an anxious, I'm thinking that, that she meant to say dog, um, tranquility is our favorite. Um, one thing, too, that I've used with really good luck is um, Butterfly Express's NVC Glycerin mm. for anxious dogs or the catnip chamomile that Butterfly Express sells. Those, those things have worked in glycerin, yes. They have worked really well for calming down my Jack Russell. She has really bad um, thunder anxiety. And she'll come begging. And she, I'll just put five drops. She only weighs 20 pounds. So I'll put five mm -hmm. drops in my hand, and she'll just lick it up, and then she usually goes and has a nap. It's amazing. Wow. NVC and the catnip chamomile. Yes. Hmm. Yep. That's interesting. Jill Pre Jill Hart says that pumpkin is also good for deworming goats. I got to ask you, Jill, is that like raw pumpkin, the pumpkin seeds? Or are you, are you like breaking it up, smashing it, like after Halloween? 
<laughs> how, how are we giving them this pumpkin? Because that's fascinating. So here's what I know about pumpkin. Um, pumpkin seeds will actually, and also diatomaceous earth, if you can get them to eat that, will actually cut the worms up and kill them that way. So the seeds, you could feed them the seeds, but you can also feed them the canned pumpkin because it makes the it makes their intestinal tracts really slippery and then the worms can't oh, that's cool. can't stay on the sides of their intestines. So there's two ways that you can use the pumpkin. So And Jill says, yeah, just the whole pumpkin in there. So mm -hmm, after yeah. Halloween, I think I'll just go gather up pumpkins and throw them yeah, in Yeah, and it pasture. really makes it slick and they like the so their awesome. whole digestive tract, really slick. See, I knew I was going to learn something today. <laughs> I knew it. As my husband says, what's going to happen when people ask you questions and you don't know the answers? I'm just going to tell them I don't know the answer to that. Somebody will know. That's what, that's what it'll be really great to have a group put together of people that like animals and, and use essential oils. So everybody join that group on Facebook so we can continue to discuss forever. We, let's not let today be the end. I have one more thing about worms while we're there. So I've noticed with my pets, especially my little indoor dogs, that the more, and I diffuse oils a lot, I'm a, I wear oils a lot. I don't generally put them on them too much, but I've noticed that they don't seem to have the problems with worms that they used to. And that's, I think, because the oils that I'm using around them are helping them, and I think they're, they're, more, they're less susceptible to picking them up. So I think even you using them around them is helpful with warming. That's interesting. I wonder if that would work with my goats because I've got, well, let's see, out of the 11, I've got two that are really, really susceptible. And I, I, they're the first ones. I start to see signs in them before anybody else. And they're all in the same pasture. So it's like I know they're getting the same amount of exposure. So, all right, Elaine Larson wants to know, what do you use for dry or itchy skin? Can we have an animal that we're putting, like, on a dog, on a cat, on a pig, horse. I mean, it's probably the same answer, but don't give me another minute to think about it. <laughs> How's that for cheating? <laughs> Dry itchy skin. Part of it's gonna also depend on why. Is it itchy right. because they've got a fungus? Is it itchy because they're not getting enough fats in their diet? It depends kind of what's going on is itching because they're having an allergic reaction to something they're getting into, and it is on a dog. So what do you think, Sarah? So the skin issue, again, is one of the hardest. Um, I do know that food, what you're feeding them, like if you're feeding them a dry dog food, the dry dog food dries out their insides. Um, so that can their food can definitely have an impact on that. They can be getting into the chemicals you're spraying on your yard. So it's, it's really hard because sometimes you're going to have better luck if you get to the root of what is going on and, and stuff. But you can do, like, I would suggest supplementing your dog with some coconut oil. Um, if you have it in the winter and your house is dry, you know, do a, a humidifier so they're around that. Don't bath them a lot if you can get away from it. I know you have to bath them sometimes, but, you know, bathing yes. them dries out their skin. Um so those are two things. I know lavender is good for the skin. Cedar wood, or not, not cedar wood, but um, carrot seed is really good carrot for the skin. Seed. I think cedar wood is too, but. Okay, she says she thinks it might be a fungus. And you know, the thing with a fungus is, is if, if it isn't a fungus and you treat it for a fungus, it's not going to hurt them at all. Right. So you're just putting no more, which is a Butterfly Express blend, and you're putting it in water and you're spraying it on. And you will see results really quickly if it is a fungus. If it's not a fungus, you won't. The other thing with a fungus that I don't think we've mentioned yet is that fungus feeds on vegetable-based oils. So if you're putting Miracle Sav on it or you're putting coconut oil on it, you're trying to moisturize it with argan oil or anything else we've talked about, if it's a fungus, it's actually going to make it worse. It's going to feed on it. So you might want to start with the no more to make sure you've got yeah, the fungus killed or, or maybe even alternate it with deliverance in case it's mites or fleas or ticks or something like that. Um, let's talk about ticks, Sarah. Speaking of <laughs> the things that come out of my mouth, I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah, start with those things for a few days, and then maybe try re-moisturizing the skin with some vegetable type oils. All right, ticks. What do you want to know about ticks? What, what if you had about? a tick in your dog? What would you do? I'd cry for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> no, um, you can use like you can use an oil to back them out. Um, 
tea tree deliverance would be I've heard clove too once I'm pretty sure I've um, never tried that one and I think they were putting it on the like with a toothpick just a teeny tiny bit right on the a tick and not all watch, the, yeah and it would back out just a little bit and then they'd add just a tiny bit more and watch it back out after I got the stupid thing out though I would be like dumping deliverance on that thing because ticks carry some of the nastiest diseases out there and they carry some really nasty neurological things so I would probably put whatever animal it was on the NBC glycerin just for a few days to make sure that whatever it was didn't take hold that would be awful you can also use um in that situation I would also consider using the BHM plus to help pull anything that was in the ticks mouth out you know so okay Becky you said ACV is also good for dry skin I am not familiar with apple a, cider vinegar apple cider vinegar see Sarah's smarter than me it's not surprising apple cider vinegar and she puts it in the water dish that's interesting because that would mean that you're balancing the pH so if their diets very very acidic and you're changing it more to an alkaline diet you might just want to switch dog foods and buy a, a better more alkaline or dog food consider you know cooking their cooking for them or whatever a lot of people have good luck with that when they have skin issues skin issues okay how often do you treat your house in a month with peppermint to keep the spiders away you know what I treat my house for spiders in September and I know you can do it more often that I am with my storage room that it's actually sealed off from the rest of my house and so I I live with a few more spiders in there I don't tolerate them anywhere else in my house but I spray the entire outside of the foundation in September with peppermint because about the time it starts to get cold that's when the mice are going to come in um, if I do have a particular problem area with spiders I'll dump peppermint on a cotton ball and I'll do it every time I see one so I guess it just depends on how bad the infestation is but once I do it I don't usually see them again for maybe 10 days or two weeks um, sometimes I think I do it I don't see them again and I completely forget so but if I see a spider we're pulling out the peppermint I am not a spider person and I really hate mice <laughs> so <laughs> All right, Karen. Hi. Okay, Becky sure says she cooks for her dog. What kind of things do you cook? Do you cook for your dog? I really try to, but I'm not super good at it. Good at it. Um, there, there are recipes out there, but it, it's it's hard to do it and work full time. So you can buy them pre cooked. Um, but it is a lot better for your pet if you do because they get a lot better nutrients and stuff like that. And you and they live longer. They just they're healthier. If they can have a more natural diet. Yeah, it's so, true. Anyway, it's it's, it's hard to do, so good for you, Becky. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Angela says, how are you diluting the deliverance oil? Yes, we're just using water. And the reason for that is because we may not have identified the skin issue yet. And if it's a fungus, we don't want to feed it. So especially for the first few days, we're just going to dilute it with water. Make sure we've killed the fungus before we start introducing anything that might be plant-based like your coconut oil your almond oil argons are great skin oil but we wouldn't want to do it for the first few days until we were sure it wasn't fungus based Jill says even raw bones like chicken wings and beef bones or deer carcass help dogs they were really designed to eat raw food that's true they were there we've domesticated them well and that's how they it's good for them when they do that to it cleans their teeth and they just they don't have the issues that they have when you know because uh you if you feed them canned dog food their teeth don't get very clean which is why we have the harder dog food and then their teeth you know it builds up on their teeth and so it's the raw bones are, yeah and it's harder for them to digest they have to actually add moisture to their dry dog food to digest it and so that's why it takes away from their moisture so we raw is really best but I mean it's hard to do <laughs> Tracy says what do you recommend for mice peppermint mice hate peppermint but you do need to be careful because peppermint is a stimulant and too much of a good thing is not always a good thing um, with peppermint I will put it in a three gallon sprayer about 10 15 drops and spray it but if you're pregnant particularly or just spread it out over a couple days do a little bit and then a little bit more don't don't play in peppermint for hours and hours it's not a good idea Okay, I want to make sure I've caught everybody's comments. I think so. Do have any more questions and things you guys would like to ask us before we before we call it a day? Um, there was a couple things I wanted to mention. I gotta make sure I've covered everything. So you can check out the pets article that's on the blog, butterflyexpressions.net, and then also our YouTube channel is where we're gonna do our live next week. And I know that's gonna throw a lot of people off, but we've 
we've actually been educated a little bit. If you watch a live video on YouTube, it streams in 1080 rather than 720. Facebook dumbs your videos down to 720, and they don't really have the servers to handle it. Whereas YouTube is actually meant for videos, and you can still comment, you can still ask questions, you can still do lives. And also, YouTube is actually a Google company, so you have way better searchability forever. If I go in and tag the video that we talked about mice, and we talked about fungus, and we talked about animals, and all these different things, the next time you're like, well, what video was it they talked about that in, you'll be able to find it. Whereas Facebook, it tends to just get lost. So I think we're going to move our lives over to our YouTube channel, which is Butterfly Express Essential Oils. And you can subscribe to that to be let know when we post new videos. Our lives will be every week, but sometimes we post other videos. Our newest one is pretty long, and it's about constituents of essential oils. Talk about a deep discussion. Wow. you got to really want to know about oils to get through that one. But it's cool. There's also a five-hour oil class on there, and there's a two-hour oil class on there. Um, there's videos about how to make your own tinctures, how to make your own salves. There's all kinds of fun videos on there. So check out the YouTube channel, and, and hopefully you'll still be able to find us next week. So any more questions, guys? It's been really fun. I'm surprised the things we've, we've <laughs> been able to cover. Dry skin seems to be um, it is. It's a huge fungus, issue. and worms seem to be huge issues with with pets and anxiety. Those seem to be like the major issues. Those are the ones that I figured we would cover today and ever, and and I was kind of curious as to where else it would go, but that seems to be the the four major major issues that we have. So that's interesting. Well, uh, mice and spiders, which we all hate. <laughs> yeah, and it's getting that want. time of year when they want to come in. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> it's, it's almost time to spray my house. But it's amazing. we got the pets we love and the ones that we don't want anywhere near our house. Mice <laughs> and spiders. Ooh. <laughs> so, all right. Well, if you guys have any more questions, join our Facebook group and let's help each other answer questions. And And the thing is, is, is this has been really good and we've been able to ask questions, but then tomorrow your dog gets diarrhea or something and you need to ask somebody, feel free to send us a message. We'd love to help with that. But hey, now we're on the topic of, of pets and diarrhea. You can use homeopathics with dogs. So the same things you would use in a person. Um, the one for diarrhea is strangely enough called diarrhea. <laughs> they work really, and they really do. well. They it's, do. Yeah, sunflower diarrhea is really great for, for pets with diarrhea. Um, the only thing with pets that I've ever seen that I couldn't really deal with 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 um, oils was cats with pink eye and I oh it's part of that whole mess of cats that I was talking about earlier but it I did end up beating it with nutrition goat's milk and giving the cats the nutrition they need gave their bodies what they needed to fight it on their own there is a, a formula it's an herb pack that butterfly does called EO and I'd make it up in a really strong tea and I'd treat their eyes with that but it, I never saw the results I did with the little silver tube from the vet, and so a lot of times with cats, I'll just treat them that way. I don't know, pink eye is a nasty one, but it, it does have a, its nutritional stems. If they are being nutritionally fed, they're able to fight it a lot better on their own. So Instead of EO, isn't it EB? EB, EB. right, yeah, EO is your oil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why there has to be two of us. Are we but that's good to use, too. <laughs> Air oil with your pets, that's a good product to use, too. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about oils for anxiety, your tranquility, millennia, maybe lavender, chamomile. We've talked about deworming with uh, Miracle 2 products. We've talked about funguses on the skin and no more in water or deliverance in water. We've talked about, um, what was the other one? There were four. We've talked about some anxious stuff. Yeah, the anxiety. Oh, um, coconut oil. If you just get, put a little bit of coconut oil on whatever they're eating, it is amazing how it, it is. shiny, it really shinies up their coats. Cats, dogs, beautiful, beautiful. You can put it in a spray bottle and spray it on, but you can also just add a little bit to their diet. It's and they like stuff. it. They really like it. My dogs do. beg, please give it to me before you leave. <laughs> It's their treat. It is their treat. Non-sugary, won't ruin their teeth, won't well, their digestive system treat. <laughs> yeah. And makes beautiful coats. So, all right. Well, I think this was really fun. And unless we get another question real quick, I think we're going to have to call it a day, though. I love all the hearts coming across the screen and the likes and the 
people laughing at me sometimes, even that was okay. I, I don't mind being laughed at. So that was, it was really fun. I'm glad so many people were able to make it. And, and really, we'd love to have comments and questions moving forward and, and join the group so you can help answer them because we're definitely by no means experts in this field, but we would definitely like to learn more. We're always open to educating ourselves and educating others. That's kind of what we do around here. So you guys have a good day. Check out YouTube. Check out the group on Facebook. And I will go fix the coupon, Oil Pets, for a free bottle of Tranquility. I will go do it right now. You guys have a good afternoon.